Hi everyone, my name is Angela Kuzmuk and I'm with AWS GameTech. Today I'm in Stockholm to interview FatShark. So Martin, can you tell us a bit about the game we're playing? Yeah, it's called Worm Dead 2. It's obviously the sequel of Worm Dead 1, surprisingly. It's a four-player co-op game. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, co-op co is really the center of the game. We try to build everything around cooperations. It's a very melee-based game. You can mm -hmm. play melee and ranged characters. We like to treat them as sitcom characters. Um, we don't tell a story like it's as a liner. Mm -hmm. We tell a story uh, through the characters' interaction with each other and the mm -hmm. world. So we try to build mm -hmm. the five different characters um, with different play styles, so everybody mm -hmm. should be able to find one, mm -hmm. one uh, character that suits their play style. Is there any like audience favorites? Is there one character that is more liked than another? I think when we look at the survey and how people play them, it's quite even. I think though Karelian, the elf that you play now, is the most popular. Because you get both ranged, but you also get like in the face combat. Yeah, she is. I mean, you get to in the face with all of them, to be fair. But I think Karelian is super fast. So I think people like the pace, how she operates, basically. Mm -hmm. Let's find the impact. Ooh, I like chests. Yep, a bomb. Could be use, useful down the road, um, and also there they are. I think I mean this takes place in the warm world, in the old warm world, so the, the fantasy version of it. Um, and our mission has always been to try to to get the feeling of you being in the world. That's been one of the core pillars for the game. So you guys chose to to self develop and self publish the games. How was that in terms of uh, making that decision as a studio? And what what did you gain from doing that? And what did you have to kind of give up as well? And we started off by uh, working as subcontractors. We were mainly like working as AI consultants, and then we built the team slowly and started doing sort of parts of games. And then we took on bigger, larger, and larger games, and we worked with different publishers and so forth. But at some point we. We had quite a few games in the development for different publishers and we realized we were not in control of our release date. If we can self-fund games, uh, we, can, we, we can be our own masters. Um, mm -hmm. The first one we did, we didn't have enough funding, so it was released a bit too early, it's called Creator. Mm -hmm. But it was a good learning experience. And then we decided, let's try to build one game that really becomes a world beater. Because mm -hmm. I have a background from both engineering and business uh, school, so I... The business side of me said, like, yeah, I need to diverse risk. Mm, mm, <laughs> and of we thought we were doing that by having multiple projects, but that was not the case. So we figured out, like, doing one really good, uh, one we're really passionate about, would probably increase our chances to get mm -hmm. a, a hit. Um, then we decided, like, this is what we've dreamt of, like, building a game <laughs> that we actually can uh, decide everything. It's, like, up to us. It's no, <laughs> we, can, we can't blame anyone else. And we didn't think about monetization. We didn't think mm. about how to earn money. We so, said, like, if we can do a great game, it mm. will give us success. Uh, and mm. then... The, and it's luckily for us it happens. <gasps> oh, oh no crap. Ah. These, these are a bit smart. We are, what we're facing right now is Beastmen. And they were added in the last expansion that was Winds of Magic that we released uh, earlier this autumn. Um, and they're a bit sturdy, they're a bit tough. And they're having different type of behaviors than the old enemies. Can uh, anyone end up in games? Like anyone who loves games, is there is there room for them in the games industry? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's also... I think we need to work on the perception of, of what game creation is today mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people see it's like, you know, you need to be a really skilled programmer to be in a game development, but that's mm -hmm. not the case. I mean, you don't need to be a technical person. You can be a designer, you can be an artist. Visual effects, obviously, sound, music, mm -hmm. uh, community management, uh, business, finance. There, there's, there's like marketing, mm -hmm. obviously. There's mm -hmm. a really wide range of people. And I think games will benefit from getting a more diverse uh, mm. workforce as well. Yes, <laughs> okay. No, but you, you're a parent. Yep. And uh, that obviously also leads to another question, is that uh, people are sometimes wondering whether or not uh, children should play games, whether people should play games at all, and if, it's, if it has negative consequences to play games. Yeah. What is, as, like, as one of the role models in the industry, and also as a parent, what is, what is your take on that? Kids, they can develop so much skills from, you can learn teamwork, you can learn like patience, learn to, you need to work hard to get somewhere. There's, there's a lot of things absolutely hmm. you can learn. You guys chose to, to put your, your eggs in one basket. How, how did you dare to <laughs> launch it, so to say? Because yeah. you, you could have done iterations forever. There is so much in the universe. Yeah, to... absolutely. I, I think, but we, first of all, uh, the analysis we did were like, it was that we looked into this genre and I felt mm -hmm. like this genre was underserved. So we felt like people love to play cooperative games. Mm -hmm. um, and not everyone wants to be 
put in the position of playing versus other people. When when you guys were uh, seeing the the meta score for the first time, the Metacritic score, what what was that like? The first sort of the PC Gamer review was was ninety percent, mm -hmm. I think. How did that feel? That was crazy. I was almost crying because <laughs> like you know you're working your whole mm. your whole life to get there, and you know and when we got the review, it was crazy. Uh, and for the second game, it was even. I was even more crazy. So when you guys were new uh, yeah. and just just starting out in the games industry, what are some of the things that because a lot of developers uh, are watching this, so yeah. it's speaking for them or uh, answering some of their questions, like what are some of the things that you guys know today uh, over these this past decade of uh, building these games that that you wish someone would have told you when you were new? Scope down. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> the most important thing. Uh, mm -hmm. We built this crazy when we started. <laughs> in 2002 or three, we, we started to build this sort of crossover between um, EVE Online and StarCraft and uh, EverQuest. It was sort of like this gigantic uh, project. Mm -hmm. And if we had built something smaller and more like, you know, it, it mm -hmm. would have, like then we would have a, a game out way earlier than we did. Mm. So I think like understanding the scope and but also at the same time be passionate, dare to do stuff. I think that's mm. um, it, it, it's super important to dare to do like cool stuff and be passionate about it. I think you should jump over there. Yeah, I think, oh, You're sorry. like me, you can't jump uh, in games. Nope. Uh, I Never failed. could, man. I Never hit Karasano could. while we were walking back in the day. I was like, this, <laughs> some of the race when you had to jump, you get the, oh. uh, it was horrible. I was like, you know, I was so nervous every time. <laughs> and then everyone else, like the whole guild has yeah. jumped over and yeah, you're and the, the only one they're there, waiting like, for. And you jump, and then when the third time you jump and fall down, it's like you're feeling <laughs> a bit awkward. You're uh, preaching to the choir. This happened to yeah. me yesterday. It is. Come on! Yeah, yes. do, you do like me. You jump yourself <laughs> as well into the screen. Body. That's perfect. That's the only <laughs> way to do it. That's the only way. You see, it worked as well. So yeah. How games are made now yeah. with with all of the uh, improved technology that makes things easier. How are you guys leveraging uh, AWS and other uh, third party uh, providers to to make your games playable by everyone and reach? I mean, obviously, it's, it's important to get a broad audience, so having a supply that can reach a broad audience is super critical. And being mm. able to have good like pings, uh, mm. network connectivity and stuff like that. Um, and also, like, you know, given the scale of games today, I think you need to team up with third party providers for a team like ours. Mm. We need we can't do everything ourselves. It doesn't mm. make sense. So, um, yeah, that's sort of a one, one thing I would say. And also, in general, you can talk about game engine as well. Uh, it's like uh, there's people ask me which which game engine should we use. I think it's mm. very much up to the game. It's the transition we made when we started working with Vermintide was like we can't be satisfied by being good for being a small Swedish studio. We need to be one of the best studios, like best games out there in our genre. So there's creativity, yeah. and then there is like the business focus and monetization. How yes. how does one think about that? I think it sounds silly and easy, but we sort of like just trying to make the best possible game and then mm -hmm. we think about monetization afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, because we know that like certain type of games, if you really want to do a specific monetization, it's good to have it in the back of your head. But mm -hmm. I think if you overthink it and like try to build everything around the monetization, mm -hmm. it's very easy that the game is not fun enough. And if mm. the game is not fun enough, you won't have any players, to be mm -hmm. fair. So uh, that, That's something that you guys are really good at, is like staying, staying really connected to your community and to your players. Has that always been central, or was that something you learned along the way? Or I think we have had that goal. I think we have sometimes I lost that, um, but it's something we always come back to. I actually added that to sort of the core pillars now to, mm -hmm. to the game, like we really need to work with the community. The thing to understand is like, you know, the community, if they feel in a certain way, uh, it's very important to listen to them and see what we mm. can do to address it. Um, the community solution might not be the best solution. You, we might need to find a solution for the problem, but the problems that the community feel is, is always real. And mm. uh, we usually say that when we have shipped the game, it's it's not our game anymore, it's the community's game. Okay, cool. Good stuff. Alright guys. This was super fun. So much fun. <laughs>